This video was made possible by Squarespace. Build your beautiful website for 10% off at squarespace.com slash H-A-I. The UK, of course, is a country made up of four distinct countries. The one everyone forgets about, Pret Territory, Buckfast Territory, and the one that no matter what you say will stir up drama in the YouTube comments. Now, this wonderful country of countries has a pretty weird political system. For example, the Queen for some reason owns all the dolphins in Britain and is also able to fire the entirety of the Australian government and also doesn't need a driver's license or passport since they're both issued in her name, but the weirdest of the weird is in this place, the Palace of Westminster. This building is of course known for being blown up in V for Vendetta, crushed in Independence Day Resurgence, and blown up again in G.I. Joe Retaliation, but interestingly, it's also believed to be where the Parliament of the United Kingdom meets. Now, the British Parliament has some unique rules. For example, MPs are not actually allowed to speak directly to one another, only to the Speaker of the House. They're also not allowed to use each other's names. They therefore only refer to each other in the third person when talking to the Speaker, saying something like, Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Member for Tewkesbury smells like beef and cheese. There's also one law saying it's illegal to wear a suit of armour into Parliament. That law was made in 1313 and remains super inconvenient since MPs have to change in and out of their armour before and after going into Parliament. Lastly, MPs aren't allowed to clap in Parliament, which is part of the reason they do all their hooting and hollering during debate. Now, this Parliament, of course, is made up of two bodies, the House of Lords and the House of Commons. The House of Lords is made up of, at least currently, 792 unelected members who are appointed by the Queen mostly off of the advice of the Prime Minister. Despite being the upper house with the flashier looking room, the House of Lords is nowadays less powerful than the House of Commons since aristocracy fell out of fashion. The House of Commons is the more democratic house with elected officials, and they're the ones really running the show. The members of the House of Commons usually serve a term of five years between elections, but the big oddity of the House of Commons is that the MPs are not allowed to resign. It is illegal to resign from the British House of Commons. Now, it's worth pointing out, despite being illegal, there's no punishment for resigning because you just can't do it. This anti-resignation rule was put in place back in 1624. What you have to consider about being an MP in 1624 is that the job wasn't quite as cushy. In fact, it wasn't even really a job. It was sort of like a part-time gig where MPs would just travel down to London for short periods to vote. Of course, it wasn't like today where you could just pop down to London on the train. It would take days to travel to and from London, and for all this work you were paid nothing. There was no salary. Therefore, being an MP was viewed as a chore rather than some great honour, and so, once an MP was appointed, Parliament wanted to make sure that they stuck around. Things have, however, changed since 1624. MPs are now paid around $100,000 per year, and the position is treated as a full-time, somewhat respected job. The other thing was that, at some point, the idea of involuntary unpaid labour became pretty unpopular. So, instead of doing something reasonable like changing the rules, Parliament started using this crazy procedure to free MPs that wanted to quit. So, how it works is that the departing MP sends in an application to the official known as the Chancellor of the Exchequer for one of two jobs. Crown Steward and Bailiff of the Three Chiltern Hundreds of Stoke, Desborough, and Burnham, or the Crown Steward and Bailiff of the Manor of Northstead. This is all because, in the rules of Parliament, it is prohibited to hold either of these jobs in the position of MP at the same time. These jobs are both essentially overseers of ancient administrative divisions that no longer exist, meaning that there are no obligations anymore, but the jobs still exist. The second an MP is appointed to either of these positions, they are no longer MPs, and they stay Crown Steward and Bailiff of these areas until they either apply to be removed from the position, or until another MP is appointed to the position when they ask to resign. Now, one important thing to point out is that the Chancellor of the Exchequer can choose not to appoint an MP to one of these positions, which means that, in theory, someone could be stuck as an MP against their will. They could, of course, just not show up to their job and they'd still get paid, which doesn't sound bad, it just probably wouldn't be great for their political careers. If your UK political career just ended, you should launch a business with a Squarespace website. You could start a cafe, for example, serving Uncle Johnson's tricky tea with Auntie May's naughty whole grain wheat biscuits. But for any business, whether it be a brick and mortar one like this cafe, or an online one like running a podcast, a YouTube channel, being a freelancer, or anything else, you absolutely need a website in this day and age. What's great is that you can build that website easily with Squarespace's customizable website builder, beautiful designer templates, and 24-7 award-winning customer support. With those, you don't have to worry about any of the minutia, so you can quickly assemble a website that looks and works great. Best of all, you can build your website for 10% off and help support the show by going to squarespace.com slash H-A-I.